This is a video to show you how to manufacture your own canopy, an overhead structure, to park cars under. I'm going to show you how to make a nine-piece set for a 10 by 20, or in this case, up to a 20 by 20. Okay, this is a simple, just a T canopy fitting, just a slide through T. And the pipe that goes inside these is inch and a half EMT, inch and a half EMT conduit, electrical conduit. They also call it thin wall with no threads on the end. It all comes in 10 foot sections and it fits perfectly inside of the inch and 7 eighths pipe. In fact, it'll usually slide clean through. Uh, once in a while though, you'll get some of that inch and 7 eighths and there'll be a, a tall ridge inside. So you, sometimes before you buy your pipe, you want to check a little piece of inch and a half EMT inside of it, make sure it slides. But uh, it slides in there just perfect. Sometimes I weld screws on them if people are going to set them up and take them apart and, and uh, take them down periodically. Otherwise, normally when I put these together, I just use a self-tapping screw, uh, about a number 14 self-tapper with a 3 8 head, about 3 quarters of an inch long. Uh, you can buy them at Home Depot. They work pretty good, holds everything in place. And this is the same thing if you want to make weights for it or you want to make a can weight to keep it on the ground, you're going to use the inch and 7 8 line post for chain link fence as a sleeve for the inch and a half or if you need to, for, to make a butt connector of any kind. And I have another video on my channel where I show exactly how this pipe notcher works, but if you don't have a pipe notcher, you can actually use a bench grinder. And in fact, I just ground this one out. Just took me a few, a couple of minutes, you know, do it a couple of times, you'll, you'll get a little better at it, but uh, if you're only going to do a few of them, like I say, a bench grinder is probably going to work just about as good as anything else. They sell these little units you can buy at Harbor Freight that are a rotary type that go in your drill and everything. About the time you get the thing chucked up and ready to go, you'll have this finished. Like I say, if you got a bench grinder, it's going to be the easiest way to do it. Okay, I'm going to show you here real quick how to, uh, how to cut a 20 degree angled corner and a 20 degree angled crown for the top piece. These are the end fittings for the canopy. And I'm going to show you how to cut these. The 20 degree angled corner, in order to get that, you have to set your bed at 35 degrees on your saw. take those and turn them back against themselves that will give you a 20 degree corner and you want to take that and you want to tack it tack it on both sides now when you go to put you want to notch your pipe like this. You want your notches to be close together like that. And then on the back side, you're going to have to take your grinder and put a notch in the back of that. When you set it down, when you put them together, that notch is going to go into the back side of your corner. Just like that. It. When you get done, you'll have one that looks just like that, and it'll be ready to weld. Usually, I'll put a, I'll put a, a, a magnetic angle here, then I'll put a T-square over here and get my get my angle nice and nice and straight. And to do the end, to do the end piece, the crown, the upper crown on top at 20 degrees, you need to set your bed on the saw at 20 degrees. Put 
it back against itself just like that and tack it on both sides. Now on the crown, you don't have to actually notch the back of the piece of pipe like you do on the corner. On the crown, you want to put your notches just a little bit off from each other. And when you get done, you tack it onto your, to your crown on the end. And it'll look about like that. Again, you want to get in there. Usually, I'll just put a, I'll put a, uh, uh, a magnetic square, T square, an angle square on the side, and then I'll just put a, a T square over here and get it flush. You want it 90 degrees on both sides, so that it'll be straight. And I'm using 12 inches, 12 inch sections of pipe. Everything else I cut at six inches, but I cut the 12s in half to make the corners and to make the crowns. And when you get done, they should come up to meet each other. Both your angles should set just like that. There you go. That'll give you a, a 20 degree angle roof. Uh, it's a little more complicated than the 30 degree, but it's a lower pitch and it tends to match the house a little bit better. Uh, a lot of houses are set at about 22 and a half degrees on the roof, so when you set this next to it, it doesn't look out of place. corner here and then I'm going to weld an end and I got my machine running I got a uh, Miller Matic 135 wire feed welder I'm using pure CO2 I got it set at 20 cubic feet per hour my machine is set at 30 inches per hour on the wire speed and I've got it set on setting number five which probably is about I don't know 50 or 60 amps on this machine probably and I'm using O35 wire. Uh, when you weld on galvanized, you have to wear a respirator or, or use a fan or uh, do something because you, uh, you can't suck up that uh, vaporized zinc. It's not good for you. But uh, welding fumes in general are not good for you. So if you've got a proper welding environment, it's, it's not going to be a problem anyways. Uh, but again, respirator, safety glasses, gloves. And in this case, I'm using an auto dark hood. 
uh, makes the whole process a lot easier. Uh, you can pay anywhere from two or three hundred dollars for an auto dark hood, or you can buy them down at Harbor Freight uh, if you catch them on sale. Sometimes you get them for forty bucks. Anyways, I'll show you what does work. There's a lot of fill weld on this stuff, and it's real light gauge, it's 16 gauge. So normally when I weld, I'll weld from top to bottom, I'll weld vertically. So I kind of use the gravity to my advantage as it kind of drips down, it actually helps in the welding process.
just have to go slow. The first few of them you do, you're going to blow through the pipe like crazy because it is it's about 16 gauge and it burns through real easy. Um, but after a while, you kind of get a get a feel for it. You listen to the, you know what it's doing, and you watch it, and you'll know when to let off the trigger. Um, and you'll also notice that a lot of times I'm whacking this thing. What happens is it builds up a lot of slag because you're welding on that galvanized. You get a lot of slag around there, so you gotta you gotta you're constantly cleaning the tip on the thing. Okay, now here I'm gonna show you how to make the angles for the center fittings. Uh, the side and the crown again are two different uh, different fittings. You have to make them a little bit differently. Uh, but you want to start when you're making your centers. You always start with a T. So make yourself a 90 degree T. Notch it out. Use 12 inches here, six inches here. for the side. Make it peak up at 20 degrees. You have to make a small notch at the base. So you actually make two notches superimposed on either side and then a small notch on one side. So that it actually looks like this. But, this, but the, like I say, the other notch is a little smaller. Just a little bite. That's all you want. device to set your angle and in this case it's going to be actually technically it's 110 degrees from here to here it's a 20 degree pitch but it's actually 110 degrees from here to here right at 20 degrees. Go ahead and tack that. be the center crown and it's going to be a shallower pitch as compared to these others although it's still going to be 20 degrees but it's going to be less of an angle. Okay now we're going to do the center crown fitting and again you're going to notch uh, superimpose one notch on either side. With this particular fitting you don't have to make that little extra notch in the middle. Put your magnet square on there like that. And in this case, you want to set your angle at 40 degrees because you got 20 degrees coming up and 20 degrees going down, so it has to be a 40 degree peak. Although it's a 20 degree pitch, that's a 40, 40 degrees on your angle here. 40 degrees, which actually works out to, this is 140 degrees in between here. Close. That's right, 
about 40 degrees, which is just about right. I'm gonna go ahead and tack that. hood when I tack but I do close my eyes and I do wear safety glasses I just you know, developed a rhythm where my trigger finger just uh, is connected to my eyelids and they automatically slam closed as soon as I pull the trigger and that's what it looks like so that's the crown in the center that's the outside four-way going any longer than longer than 20 feet you just keep making more of these three of them for every 10 foot section you can make the canopies as long as you want and I'm gonna weld these up this wire wheel on this grinder is what I use to clean my wells and to clean the burrs off the ends of the pipe with um, you can clean it with just about anything actually you can even use a hand use a wire a wire brush by hand and do it uh, just I do a lot of them and this is a little easier uh, it is a little dangerous so having that wire wheel hanging out there like that so you got to be careful a respirator when I do that too. Uh, what happens is you get a lot of stuff in the air. Uh, even the galvanized comes off the outside of it and kind of goes into the air. It's not a good idea to breathe it. When you get all done, of course, the weld isn't galvanized anymore. You've got to coat it with something. Unless you've got a uh, zinc plating process somewhere locally or someplace you can get a powder coated or something, you're probably going to wind up using cold galvanizing compound made by Rust-Oleum. It works really good. I've had fittings that have been up for years and they still haven't rusted. I use this exact same kind of paint and it's 93% pure zinc and it's nice and thick. So a lot of times it makes your wells look better too. It's kind of like a thick primer. But uh, just kind of squirt it on there real quick. It doesn't take long, it'll dry right up. And uh, like I say, about the best stuff I found to keep it from rusting. And there you have it. That is a nine piece set. And like I say, this will make 20 by 20, 10 by 20, using the inch and a half EMT conduit pipe. You need to make it longer, just make more parts. You need to make it wider, and that gets a little trickier, but 
to get any interest off of this, I'll produce some more videos and show different sizes of pipe and how to weld screws on them and T's and elbows and X's and stuff. But this will give you kind of a basic idea. Thanks for watching.